village, ranging from development proposals on the Pier 40 to a neighborhood improvement district. As a city council member, how are you going, going to make sure that the community is involved and at the forefront of New York, of new decisions proposed about the neighborhood? Proposals always come into the West Village, ranging from development proposals on Pier 40 to a neighborhood improvement district. As a city council member, how are you going to make sure that the community is involved and at the forefront of new decisions proposed about the neighborhood? Thank you very much. It's a great question, and as many folks know in this room, both members of FEARS, people who live in the community, the Hudson River Park Trust has been in dire financial shape. Uh, or at least they claim to be, who knows if it's actually true, for quite some time. And their projections, as they state, uh, look at uh, that the park is going to be in real trouble over the next few years unless they're able to generate more revenue for the park. Now there have been a few proposals to redevelop Pier 40, and there has been significant community opposition to those, which has defeated those proposals. I know that Fierce has made their voices heard with, throughout those processes to say that there should be a safe space for LGBT youth at whatever happens at Pier 40. I would be supportive of that, of making sure that there would be a safe place for LGBT youth at Pier 40, whatever happens there. Governor's Island, a park that is only used, I think, four months out of the year, has received over $300 million in city funds for upgrades and improvements over the past few years. Our park, the Hudson River Park, is used 365 days a year. And it's a park that, because the way it was set up through Albany legislation, does not get the city funds that it deserves. We have to make sure that the city actually invests city money into the HRPT. And we have to make sure that any proposal that moves forward at Pier 40 is done in a community-minded way that keeps the ball fields there, that finds safe places for LGBT youth, that, as yet I mentioned before, maybe to do incubation for small businesses at Pier 40 to see if it works. We have to be creative about it and hopefully have a mixed development there that works not just for the financial situation of the park, but works for all the people that use the park and value the park in a real way. And the only way to do that is through real community conversations, community board meetings, Hudson River Park Trust advisory meetings, meetings with local uh, neighbors and residents and organizations and small businesses. That's what we need to do to make sure that whatever happens at Pier 40, at Pier 76, is done in a way that works for everyone involved and is not just about raising the maximum amount of money. That's what I believe needs to be done uh, for the trust. Thank you. I'm going to answer this on a micro macro level. So on a micro level, uh, I was encouraged to see that the community defeated the NID, uh, the NID. Uh, I think I know Corey supported it, I, I opposed it. Uh, but the reason I opposed it was because um, the uh, monies that would be generated from that would not come close to what the supposed gap was in terms of funding. And I think that we need to keep the Hudson River Park and all public land completely and totally public and not open or differently accessible to different people, whether they be landowners in the area, whether they be visitors or renters or residents nearby. Um, what I have proposed also is that I'm somebody who's been an advocate for accountability and oversight. Uh, I would look to audit what the money and funding and spending of the Hudson River Park Trust has been to date, uh, because as uh, I don't know that we uh, know where that money has been spent, if it's been spent effectively, but I think the biggest problem, and this isn't going to be resolved with neighborhood improvement districts or small efforts that maybe generate, you know, a, a million dollars here or a million dollars there, which sounds like a lot, but isn't going to solve the problem uh, with the funding issues with the Hudson River Park. Um, I think what we need to do is push to get the city and the state to match funding so that we can restore the proper funding into the park. The problem has been that over time, both the city and therefore the state have not matched dollars that are supposed to go into the upkeep and maintenance of that park. And here's the other problem. I know that we've turned our attentions and uh, developers have proposed that there be this development in Pier 40. I know that it's moving forward. Um, but the problem that we see on a macro level is beyond just Pier 40.
40. We, we oftentimes have problems with our public facilities and we have developers who step up and say that they're going to solve the problem with the Hudson River Park Trust, they're going to solve the problem with whatever it is, um, and then we kind of skip around and get focused on the development and the concessions and the things that are supposed to come out of that development often don't happen. How many times have we been enough promised affordable housing with developments when the affordable housing doesn't actually come into fruition? We need somebody who's going to be an independent voice, not tied to those real estate interests, who can hold developers feet to the fire to make sure the long-term results are to actually get the types of concessions uh, that we set out to start the development for. That being said, Pier 40, it's not for the development. We're, de we're thinking about developing Pier 40 because we need to write, raise funds to protect the parklands, and we need to keep our priorities straight and be focused on public interest and public sector. I think I've proven over, over 20 years as an advocate in this community that I'm willing to stand up to those real estate interests and to make sure not only that it's a fair trade for our community that's reflective of our community, that we do have our community's voice, but also that when the time comes to get those concessions, they actually come Thank into fruition. Thank you. At this point, that wraps up our moderated question.